So this is an interesting result. It's not. It's due to Bowen. Uh, how to compute the growth rate of a uh, finitely generated new protein. So the proof is uh, very complex. Uses several results by uh, using the results of the growth rate uh, finding the growth rate of uh, polycyclic groups, solvable groups by Wolf and Milner and so on. So this is the proof is very complex. So anyhow, suppose gamma be a finite degenerated important group of class D, then the growth rate of alpha is the maximum growth rate of alpha on the quotient gamma k mod gamma k plus one to power one k. And this is very important. Uh, and we have example that you actually do need that power, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, and this is an equivalent to find the growth rate, the maximum growth rate of on uh, gamma mod gamma t, where where this new group is a finitely generated important group of class t minus one, assuming that the class of the important group we consider is t, and the uh, growth rate of alpha on gamma t to power one t. And uh, this gamma t is interestingly, as we all know, simple fact the right important group is central in gamma. So this is very interesting. So as I said, it would be interesting if you just consider what happens when you have um, solvable groups um, and see what happens there. It could be a little bit more wide because um, you know the structure is all of a sudden explodes. And anyway, so we have half an hour. So this is an example that we considered um, on Heisenberg group, a simplest um, nilpotent group of class two mm -hmm. that can be presented as upper triangle of matrices. And uh, we computed the uh, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. Of course, gamma 1 is the whole group, gamma 2. We can show it that way. And you know, I don't want to go too much into it. Um, it just shows that um, I, I need the power I just mentioned. I mentioned here. I need this power. Otherwise, um, doesn't work because it, it's uh, in the original Bowen's paper. I don't know if it was a typo or what it was, but this power was forgotten for some reason. So now, um, well, one natural question we do in group theory when we have a question, we consider it over various products. So we have usually direct product, semi-direct product, free product, or free product with amalgamation. It's a linear product, and important product, but I don't know about those. <laughs> so this is a fairly easy lemma that uh, can be computed using those relations I showed with uh, quotient and subgroup. So suppose gamma be the direct product of A and B, two finitely generated groups. And uh, alpha be the endomorphism of gamma to itself again. And uh, you need two conditions. Either alpha is subset of A or alpha B is subset of B. So then the way you compute the growth rate on the whole group is the maximum growth rate on A and growth rate on B. So since I didn't do proof, I can just show you, it's, as I said, it's very simple. Um, using the relation I showed you at the beginning and the connection between them, the first thing, growth rate of alpha and gamma is less than growth rate on A, which is less than growth rate of alpha on B, because A and B are both normal, you can take the quotient, so you have um, what I mentioned, growth rate. Um, 
growth rate of the whole thing is less than or equal to maximum growth rate on the group and the quotient. And the same thing happens when you take the B. So if you take the maximum of these two, you can just see the equality holds. So this is just comes for free. Um, and uh, similarly, you can show that it's uh, when you have the free product um, of two groups, A, B, again, two finally generated, growth rate of alpha will be growth rate of alpha on A and growth rate of alpha on B. Um, so the interesting thing happens when you have the semi-direct product, you have some sort of twist. Um, so let me, def let me remind you about the definition of the semi-direct product. Suppose you have two groups, H and Q, and uh, define the semi-direct product of them, gamma, it's H semi-direct. Q, it comes equipped with, uh, with this homomorphism, which is from the second group to the odd of the first one, of course, depending on when, how you write this. Uh, so how do, you comp how do you multiply two elements? Well, the second component, you just multiply them as you had, as you have for, for direct product. The first one, however, it's H phi Q acting on the H bond, the second element. So it's, it's a little different. So you can, um, this is very small, I didn't have space. Uh, you can uh, keep multiplying elements because that's what we, we need when we want to say something about uh, the growth rate over the center. So you can just keep doing the same thing. And uh, what I'm going to use is this piece, that when you have n of them, this is the last piece that we get n. That's, that's uh, going to help with uh, finding the center. Um, so this is uh, pretty straightforward if you have, um, if you consider a semi-direct product of two finely generated abelian groups. So if you have finely generated abelian group and take the semi-direct product, it doesn't really um, rely on, on this uh, homomorphism. So you can basically compute it um, using the maximum absolute value of this um, eigenvalues, um, where this lambda are the eigenvalues mm -hmm. of alpha tensor 1 on A tensor C, and a mu 1 up to mu t are the eigenvalues of um, alpha tensor 1 on B tensor C. Um, so eventually, uh, I want to say a few things about the growth rates of an endomorphism on polycyclic groups. So let me remind you again what a polycyclic group is. So a group is called polycyclic if uh, there exists a polycyclic series for the group that is a subnormal series of finite, finite length with cyclic factors. So you have this uh, subnormal series such that the quotient of the consequent one is, is cyclic. And then um, you have this um, definition of the huge length that you count the number of infinite cyclic groups. Um, so the interesting thing happens that um, if you have a polycyclic group and the endomorphism and if alpha is an endomorphism, alpha and gamma. So here we have, so this one has to preserve the polycyclic group. So for every alpha of that chain, alpha pi include in the, in the pi. So this is an important thing that we need. And if this happens, growth rate of alpha is, is an integer. What's the meaning of why do you have to have the uh, generators, a subset of the generators of gamma? 
Um, because otherwise, for example, finitely generated abelian groups are polycyclic. And I just showed um, the example that uh, the growth rate is, for example, square root of 2 based on that eigenvalue. But it wasn't. Uh, so if you write the chain, it, uh, that endomorphism doesn't preserve the series. It doesn't preserve the series. Right. But so generated, you might preserve the series without the generators all being subsets of one another. Uh, right. That's an extra hypothesis here. Okay. Or, or you prove that you have such a, maybe you just prove you have such a set of generators. Yes, you do. Yes, you do have a set of changes. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you short proof. Also, this is fun. Mm -hmm. So the simplest case, if you have a metacyclic group, so it's cyclic by cyclic. So if you have a Meta cyclic group, cyclic by cyclic group, so that goes back to what we just showed. Um, you can show that the growth rate is the maximum growth rate of alpha and A and growth rate of alpha and the quotient. And uh, since each of them are cyclic, and I just said that the growth rate of alpha and cyclic groups is an integer, so I'll take the max of yet another integer. So you can um, you can use some sort of induction on the length of the series and just show that eventually it will be it will be an integer. This is an interesting question in general, you know, to show, for example, if this growth rate of an endomorphism is algebraic number, or whatever. Polycyclic groups are polycyclic groups are solvable, but not no potent, is that the? Yes. The finite degenerative no potent groups are polycyclic. Are polycyclic, but not Finite yes. degenerative no potent groups are polycyclic? Yes. Oh, yeah, but the endomorphisms may not preserve the. Exactly. Yes, yes. Um, so before I talk about the growth rate, of an endomorphism on the semi semi direct product. I want to remind you a very interesting definition by Gromov. So if you have a finite degenerated group, Gromov has defined the distortion function rho n of a finite degenerated subgroup of H in gamma as follows. If you take n to be a natural number, the value rho n is the radius of the set of vertices in the Cayley graph of H that are a distance at most n from the identity in gamma. Okay? So, so basically consider, so how does H basically sits inside this gamma in the Cayley graph? Why is it n? Well, because there may not be any elements of length n. Yes. Ah. So if you draw the k graph, my imagination is that of gamma, then depending on how h sits inside it, mm -hmm. you take this rate. So the simplest example that is out there is that if phi is in uh, GLNRZ, has a, an eigenvalue of absolute value greater than 1, then ZR is exponentially distorted in the semi-direct product of ZR and Z. So after this definition, we have this result that uh, connects the growth rate of, of the endomorphism that uh, map between them and the distortion of H and the group. So let me tell you what it is. So if gamma is a semi-direct product of H and Q, where phi is a homomorphism from Q, the, the second group into the automorphism of H, is semi-direct product. And uh, suppose gamma H and gamma Q be generating sets 
for H and Q.